Hello, and again, welcome to Pet Talk. Um, today we thought that Cheryl and I would uh, uh, kind of diverge a little from some of the things we've been doing in our past segments and dedicate this to talking about cats. There are a bunch of them in this country and we love them dearly. Um, I'm going to rely on Cheryl as the dog trainer here at Second Chance Animal Shelter. Um, I don't know as much about cats as I do dogs, but fortunately Cheryl has uh, 20 years of experience uh, with all kinds of animals. So we're going to kind of pick her brain a little this morning and try and get you some really good information about um, what cats are, what they do, how they behave, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, we thought we'd have some fun, you know, with some fun cat facts and how to bring a cat into your house and, and about choosing the right cat for your lifestyle. Um, amazingly, there are 95 million cats in this country compared to 83 million dogs. So cats are definitely uh, the more popular house pet. 62% um, of all households in America have a pet, whether it's a dog or a cat. So we are a very um, pet friendly country. Um, so what I want to start talking about is kittens. Everybody thinks about getting kittens. Um, and it's very important for you to be sure that you're ready for a kitten versus an adult cat. Adult cats are much more settled. Um, if you're going to get a kitten, the earliest age that a kitten should be away from their mom is eight weeks. Um, we often have people call us and they've gotten a six week old or five week old kitten and they think it's okay because the cat is eaten on their own. Well, that's simply not true. Um, it would be like putting your, your 12 year old out into the world. Um, yes, they can probably fend for themselves somewhat, but it's not the right time to do it. Um, definitely eight weeks old. Um, and kittens that young at eight weeks old, two pounds can be spayed or neutered. And they recover amazingly well within hours after surgery. You would never know they had the surgery. And that's the best time really to do it because believe it or not, kittens can get pregnant as early as five months. Wow. And yeah, and people don't realize that. And we have a lot of people that go by the old, um, the old belief of six months old and they bring their cat in at six months old to be spayed and come to find out it's pregnant. Isn't there um, controversy in the veterinary world about um, what we call pediatric? Spaying and neutering? There was. I, I think that is, be, is dissipating over the last few years because and people have realized, I mean, there's a lot of data on pediatric spay and neuter now. I mean, it's been done for probably 15, right. 15 years now. And um, there's, there's no greater risk, in my opinion, than any other than doing it older. In fact, it's probably a little less. Um, it's not unusual with older cats to see um, different things when you when you're spaying them, um, you know, pyometra is, a, is mm -hmm. which is an infection of the uterus, is very common in cats that have been allowed to you know be older and not be spayed. Um, we have seen that, which is a serious complication. So um, you do alleviate that issue there. Um, Isn't it? Is it uh, in the dog world? Um, we also talk about dogs not leaving mom for eight weeks mm -hmm. for the reasons of um, multiple reasons actually but of course the feeding part is uh, mm -hmm. is an important thing is it the same with cats that it's important for them to be in their litter yes. um, for that eight weeks to learn behavioral um, appropriateness yeah, it's, suppo it's, suppo it's important for their social skills yeah. um, you know they learn a lot from each other and from the mother so it's very important that kittens do not leave their mom before eight weeks uh, we see a lot of behavioral issues in kittens that have left the mom too young. Mm -hmm. So that's one important thing. Um, like I said, the, the spaying is another important thing because you don't realize that, you know, kittens average one to nine per litter. Um, I think the record is 19 wow. kittens um, in a litter. So they can have a lot of kittens very quickly and they can be pregnant multiple times in a year. So if you don't get your cat spayed, you can quickly go from two cats to 20. In fact, there is a statistic that a pair of kittens that left unspayed, unneutered, and allowed to breed, in seven years, the, the, that group and their offspring can um, bring in 420,000 cats into the world. That's a staggering St number. Yeah, yeah. And I, um, I, would, I would assume that because of those types of statistics, one of the reasons that we see in shelters um, the, um, the huge amount of cats kittens and cats, adult cats, being euthanized is basically because of how fast 
Yep. Um, they can they can multiply. How many how many cats uh, do we think are actually euthanized every year? Well, the statistics are six to eight million animals come into shelters every year. Two point seven million are euthanized, yeah. and these are healthy, adoptable animals that are being euthanized. And the majority of them yep. are cats. Yep. Um, we can't adopt our way out of this fast enough. We really need to, to concentrate on spay neuter. So whether you bring an adult or a kitten into your house, it's very important to get them fixed um, for a multitude of reasons. Besides just the fact that you don't need to have kittens, um, you also deal with the issue of if there is a female cat in the area and you have a male cat, you're going to deal with spraying issues. And I, to me, there's nothing worse than the smell of a, of a male cat spraying in your house. Um, so I would definitely recommend getting that done. Um, that's, a, that's an important f fact too in, in getting into that, the whole litter box thing. Um, you know, you don't want to have cat spray. So if you, if you don't want to deal with that kind of litter box issue, spaying and neutering is important. So again, for, I'm looking at it from the dog point of view and I'm going to look for you <laughs> to tell the folks out there about the cat point of view. Um, when you bring a puppy home, you go through house training. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole set of procedures. We've talked about that in, in some of our previous shows. Um, how do you house train a kitten? Well, the litter box comes naturally. Um, what we recommend is one litter box per cat plus one. So if you have two cats, you should have three litter boxes. Uh, it's important when you first bring a cat into the house to maybe bring them into the room where you're going to keep the litter box and keep them in there for the day, just so that they know where the litter box is and everything, and they have a chance to kind of settle in before you give them free roam of the house. If you bring in either, whether it's a cat or a kitten, but most importantly with a kitten, you gotta get down on your hands and knees like you would for a child and, and look around because they're going to get into the cords, they're gonna climb, they're going to get into things. Um, so you wanna make sure that you, you get that stuff out of there so that they don't get into trouble. I always recommend if you're going to adopt a kitten to adopt two if possible because at least they can entertain themselves um, and they're a lot of fun besides to watch but also there will be less likely to be climbing your curtains and stuff because they have someone to play with something to do otherwise they're going to look for something to do and it may not be an appropriate thing to do. Is there any special things that um, you need to be aware of if you're bringing a kitten or a cat into a home where there is a dog. I know we, we go through that when we're um, um, matching dogs to families if there's mm -hmm. cats in the house. Does it work on the other side as well? It does. I mean, you, you don't just want to bring a cat into the house, drop it on the floor with your dog and say, here you go. That's not going to work. Yep. Um, you need to let the, the dog get used to the cat and vice versa. Um, you should, if you're going to bring a cat into the house, you should know whether your dog is, is cat friendly or not, first of all. Um, I had an experience of bringing a cat into a house with a dog that was not cat friendly. Um, and what we did is we had the cat in, we, I got a very, very large crate, put the cat in the crate where the dog could see him and that way we could supervise him and got him used to the smells and the actions of the cat. Mm -hmm. And then slowly we introduced them uh, mm -hmm. with me holding the cat so that the cat was protected. Um, you want to do it in a slow thing and make sure that they're going to be okay together and supervise them until you're sure that there's not going to be a problem. Um, you don't want to leave them unattended when they're first together, you know, maybe separate them in a different room or whatever, because you don't want to come home and find that they've gotten into a, a huge fight because it's not going to be good. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so that's, that's one how, of the important how about, things. How about feeding cats? I know that Again, with dogs, there's a big difference between puppy food um, and adult food. Um, is that the same thing with, with kitten it's the same versus thing. adult? Cat? Yeah, you want to use kitten food. Um, kitten food is, is just like puppy food. It's got the nutritional values that they need. Um, contrary to public belief and, and longstanding old wives' tale, cats should not be given milk. Um, it will upset their stomach. They, they really are not tolerant of of those kind of products. Um, well, that, that's a big one because most people, um, and particularly as we talk with people who are adopting cats, um, just seem to think that the old uh, folklore is, oh, I'm going to put a, 
a little plate of milk out to yeah, feed no. the dog. Are they lactose intolerant? Is it what? What that's, is it exactly? Yeah, that seems to be the the belief. It does upset their stomach, so I, I guess lactose intolerant would yeah, be a okay. Would be a so good thing so not account. a good thing to do. Not <laughs> a good thing to do. There, you know, just like dogs, um, there's a number of things you shouldn't give them. You know, chocolates, grapes, onions, all the same things that are not recommended yep. for dogs. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, another interesting fact is is cats do not have a sweet tooth. They they do not have any interest in sweets so you know you don't have to worry about that um, and that's why they're fine with with food like the the fish the chicken all of those things are good for them I highly recommend dry food um, it keeps their teeth clean you want to so you want to use that if you want to give them some canned food that's fine in small amounts but just keep in mind that that you know they need something to clean their teeth um, because just like anybody else, we've talked about dogs before. If mm -hmm. you don't clean their teeth in seven years or you didn't clean your teeth in seven years, what would they look like? Right. Um, dental surgery is expensive. Mm -hmm. And if, it, if it's gone untreated, it can cause a lot of diseases mm -hmm. um, because of the bacteria that will go into their, their system from the, the teeth that either are right. infected or right. rotting or right. whatever. Causing, just like dogs, causing issues with uh, livers and kidneys and... Yep, and, all uh, kinds of all things of that like stuff. that. So kittens don't stay kittens for very long. They don't. And, you know, everybody who wants to adopt usually comes in and wants a kitten. And what we try to explain to them is <laughs> unless you're really ready to deal with a kitten, just like you would a puppy, an adult cat, kittens are, aren't kittens for very long. At six months of age, they're almost as big as they're going to get. So why not just skip all of that, you know, tearing up and, and everything and go right to an adult. I mean, that's my opinion. I, I recommend. But they are the cutest. Thing. They are the cutest. <laughs> they are the cutest. And if you're going to adopt kittens, I would recommend to because yeah. they are, you know, they'll be going across your, your house at 90 miles <laughs> Absolutely. an hour. Um, and one other thing, getting back to the litter box, um, because that is a big thing for people who, you know, call to surrender is that they're having litter box issues. When you bring a cat or a kitten into your house, um, the litter box, you want to make sure they are using the litter box properly. If they're not, it could be a number of reasons why they're not using the litter box. Um, there are products out there to help with that, like Cat Attract. Um, if for some reason, some cats are fussy about the litter mm -hmm. too. So you want to try that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is you want to see if there's a medical issue behind them not using the litter box. It could be that they have a urinary tract infection. Um, very, you know, very common for that to happen, um, very easily to treat, and once you treat it, they will use the litter box. Mm -hmm. Keep the litter box clean. Um, uh, what I equate it to is you wouldn't want to use a dirty bathroom, neither would they. So keeping your litter box clean is, is another reason to, to make sure mm -hmm. that they're using the litter box yeah. and make sure it's big enough. I mean, I've seen people with big cats and their litter box is this big. Well, of course, when they go in that litter box, there's a good chance they're going to mess. <laughs> um, my cat had that issue mm -hmm. um, where she would stand in the litter box and actually pee outside the litter box. So mm -hmm. what we did is we had a mat underneath it as well um, to deal mm -hmm. with that problem okay. because that was just the way she was. She would always be at the edge of the litter box. Um, she did go to the litter box, she never went anywhere else, but that was, that was an issue. So you can find ways to address that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very important as well. So there's, there's controversy, I guess is not really the right word, but there's a lot of differences of opinion on whether cats should remain indoors mm -hmm. or whether they should be free to go outdoors. Now, just like dogs, um, you know, they're natural born hunters, so they mm -hmm. enjoy being outside, which is one of the reasons why when you open the door, they're ready to bowl. Yeah. Pros and cons of keeping a cat as an indoor cat or an outdoor well, cat? Well, my opinion is cats should be inside. Um, they are, we have domesticated them and um, they, they should be inside. <laughs> Uh, if you're going to have your cat outside, you, there, are, there are ways of keeping them safe. There are enclosures and things like that, that so that they can go outside. Um, if you're a lover of wildlife like I am, you don't want to see your cat going out there killing the birds that you're feeding at the bird feeder. So sure. that's a big thing. Um, there are actually estimated 60 million feral cats in America. Mm -hmm. And feral cats are um, outside wild cats. You can't pick them up. You can't handle them. Uh, they've been, at one time or another, they were either cats that were let outside and, or dumped outside, or they were born outside. They were, you know, an unspayed female was left outside and the kittens were born. They've never had any human interaction. 
and unfortunately they're out there. I mean, in the perfect world, we shouldn't have feral cats um, because they're not meant to be outside. We have domesticated them and um, they should be inside. You know, it'd be like having a tiger inside your house. It's the same thing as having a cat outside your house. That, that, that's not what's meant to right. be. Yeah. Um, and so it's very important if, if there are feral cats out there that they do get spayed and neutered. Um, you know, many people feed uh, feral cats. Yep. So let, let's talk about feral cats. Feral, the word meaning wild. Mm -hmm. um, and as you said, at some point they were yep. domesticated cats because that's what we've done over the, yep. the centuries. Um, left them outside and they revert to their, their, uh, their natural side. I would have to imagine that living outside particularly in the cold winters here in, in Massachusetts, that's a tough life. So lifespan it is between a, a feral cat and an yeah, indoor cat average, has to be different. Yeah, I, I, the estimates are that an average life expectancy of a feral cat is two years, hmm. um, where the normal life expectancy of a cat is 20 years. So that's a big difference. Big difference, yeah. um, because they're, they're prone to you know, getting hit by cars, um, wildlife, coyotes, whatever, or would get hmm. them. Um, another interesting fact is that their coats do not insulate them very well when they're wet. Um, that's why cats don't like water, mm -hmm. um, unlike dogs. Dogs, dogs coats are different. Um, so they, they have a lot of um, things that, that can happen to them. In fact, um, the estimate of mortality rate in kittens um, born out in the wild is like 34% in yeah, the first year. Not, I mean, not, it's very not good, high. Not good. Yeah, it's so we, we, do, we do a lot of things in terms of... Um, trying to help and alleviate the situation of feral cats mm -hmm. um, here at Second Chance. We have a lot of program. Can we talk about just some of the things that, uh, that we do for these colonies of feral cats? Well, the big thing is, is a TNR program, which is trap, neuter, release. Um, because, you know, it's, it's not their fault that they were put out there. And mm. I am not an advocate of, of euthanizing them for the simple reason that uh, it's not their fault. And they do serve a purpose out there. If you're going to have feral cats, get them, get them spayed and neutered in that way. Um, they are not reproducing. And they do, they do provide rodent control. Uh, that's the one big thing when you do have feral cats out there is they do, they do, you know, go after the mice and rats or whatever else might be, you know, out there. And, and I would think that um, obviously they're looking for a food source. Yes. So the fact that they are good in terms of uh, controlling rodents um, in locations where there are food sources, restaurants, mm -hmm. yes. um, uh, supermarkets, that kind of thing. That's uh, yeah. that's usually where we kind of see. It's where cats. we see them, and also uh, there's been a lot of times where people have have taken and trapped all the cats and euthanized them at you know behind supermarkets or whatever, you know, thinking they're going to resolve the problem. And guess what? Six months later, they have cats yeah, again because the food source. Because the food there. source is yeah, there, and sure. with 60 million yep. cats out there in America, yeah. they're going to yeah. find that yeah. food source. Yeah. So what you want to do in those situations, to me, is the, the best situation is to, is to do the TNR. Get them spayed and neutered, get them vaccinated against rabies, and you yeah. know, let them live yeah. out their life there because these feral cats are not going to do well in right. a home. You know, people think, oh, if I take them in and work with them, they're going to be fine. Yeah. The ones, the feral cats that, you know, quote unquote, turn around are maybe stray cats that have only been out there for a shorter period of time. They do revert fairly quickly back to the wild, but short period of time, they'll turn around. And we've, we've had some success with that, but the majority of them are not. They're going to always be the ones, if you put them in the house, you're never going to see them because mm -hmm. they're going to disappear. We, you know, we disappear have heard um, from folks that have feral colonies uh, around their houses, close to their houses. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, some people at their workplaces, um, whether they're restaurants or supermarkets, um, will take care of, quote unquote, a, a feral cat mm -hmm. colony. And many of them say to us, oh, I don't know about that because they come right up to me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I bring the food out to feed them. Mm -hmm. Is that a phenomenon? I mean, we're saying that they, you can't handle them, but yet we have people saying to us, oh, they'll come right up to me. and." They may come up to the caregiver. I mean, over time they get used to that. They associate that person with food. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and they may, yep. they may. Um, lots of farms have barn cats, mm -hmm. um, and you know those cats are more of a semi-feral. They, those people can, you know, that have them can even pick them up and handle them. But we're talking about the true feral out there that you know you can't get near except for maybe the caregiver. Right. Uh, and I've seen, you know, people say, well, I, I think it's, you know, it's friendly. I've seen them pick it up, and they go to pick them up, and they get scratched or bitten. 
which is not a good thing either. Um, you know, speaking of that, there, there's like 40,000 cat bites in America every year. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, if I had the choice of being bit by a dog or a cat, I'd rather get bit by a dog. Mm -hmm. And the reason is uh, the bacteria, the infection rates that I have seen with cat bites is just really bad. Yeah, but um, particularly those that are that are out in the wild. Well, I don't know if it even matters. I, I don't know what the statistic is, whether you know they're any worse, mm -hmm. but uh, what I have seen of people that have gotten bit mm -hmm. is cat bites tend to get infected to the point of having to have IV um, antibiotics and things like that. So you don't want to get bit and don't handle the feral cats. You know, it's not worth it. Um, certainly to get to get bit like that. I mean, I've seen some serious, mm -hmm. serious bites from people who have tried to handle feral cats. And those claws can shred and you up claws, pretty quickly. And those claws, yes. <laughs> I've seen people who are professionals in the <laughs> field who, have, who know how to deal with ferals yep. and they have gotten yep. really yep. ripped up. I yep. mean, I, I watched one animal control officer one time who, who just lost her grip on the feral cat and that cat turned around and shredded her arm so fast. Yep. Uh, yeah, in a blink of an eye, and in, in, it's serious. So mm -hmm. if there's a feral cat and you're feeding it, you know, that's fine. Don't try to pick it up mm -hmm. and don't try to handle mm -hmm. it. Um, you, you can figure out over time if the cat truly is just a stray and is friendly, you know, that's one thing. But I've been in animal control for 20 years, and I can't tell you how many times I've gone out to a case where somebody has gotten seriously bitten by a cat that they were feeding outside and then decided they were going to bring the cat inside. As soon as the cat got inside, it freaked and they tried to pick it up and got bit. Yeah. Um, it's, just, it's just not worth yeah. it. So, so let's go back. Those little kittens grow up mm -hmm. and they become full-grown adult cats. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the behavior of cats, what they like to do, um, the way they like to interface with humans, which is a little bit different than we see with our dog friends. That's true. Uh, well, cats spend two-thirds of their lives sleeping, which some people may really like that. <laughs> um, we know I, some people that spend their lives sleeping. <laughs> yeah, sleeping. So, I mean, they do spend two-thirds <clears throat> of their lives sleeping, um, and a third of their, their waking time cleaning themselves. So they're, they're pretty much more... Uh, unlike dogs, um, they tend to, you know, spend a lot more time as being alone or doing things on their own. So they're um, kind of independent as they're, to Yeah, they're more independent. I always recommend cats to people who have very, very busy lifestyles, maybe gone right. from their house 16 hours a day or something like that. It's not fair unless you're going to have somebody come in to take care of your dog during the day. It's not really fair to leave a dog in the house 16 hours a For day. Sure. Um, and I, I know people that, that do that. Um, some do it successfully by having dog walkers come in, and that's mm -hmm. what you have to do. If you don't have that luxury, cats are great um, because you can, they can be alone all day. They don't mind it. Um, you know, as long as there's food and water available to them, the temperature is comfortable in the house, they're fine. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to be alone that much, I do. You know, if your cat tolerates a second cat, I always recommend a second cat just because then they can play with each other. Mm -hmm. Um, toys should be available to them because if they don't have toys available, they're going to find something to play with. And it may not be something that you want them to play with. It could be your couch. It could be your <laughs> pillow. Yeah. And speaking of that, um, if you, another thing that people complain about is their furniture getting scratched up. Mm -hmm. Whether you have a kitten or an adult cat, um, we do not recommend declawing. Um, it's, it's very barbaric. Mm -hmm. um, if it, People don't realize, and you can look it up online, Declaring would be basically like taking, taking from this point in your finger off. Um, very painful. It's really not. Most of the cats that I know that, I don't say most, but several of the cats I know that are declawed, the problem is that's a defense for them. You take that away, the only other defense they have is biting. So um, I would recommend never to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, if you, if you want to prevent your furniture from getting wrecked, there's a lot of things you can do. One is having a scratching post, put a little catnip on it, the cat will love it. Um, the other thing, there, there's products called, such as soft claws, mm -hmm. which are caps that go over the nails. And those will prevent them from scratching up your, your, um, your furniture. Mm -hmm. And they're, you know, for some people, they're very decorative too. You can get them in different colors, and, and you know, for the time of year, you can put, you know, for the Halloween or do Christmas. They have like a French manicure. Yeah, cat they do or? actually. <laughs> they have them. They have sparkly ones and everything. So they're they're really cute. Um, keeping your nails, the nails trimmed, 
Um, we did talk about this on a previous one, but um, you know, trimming your cat's nails are very easy to do. Um, you just want to, you know, just want to nip it. You want to make sure you're not hitting the quick, which you should be able to, and the white claws are very easy to see. You can see it's like a pinkish, the, the quick is very pink and you want to be past that. Um, black nails are a little tougher. But, um, you know, keeping them trimmed regularly when you get a kitten, if you get a kitten versus an adult or even with an adult, you want to trim them regularly so they're used to you handling their claws and, and, and trimming them up. But the soft claws are great. You know, you put them on, they're good for weeks. You know, take them off, trim them, you know, put mm -hmm. them back on. Mm -hmm. That will definitely protect your furniture. Um, but scratching posts, you, you have to have that stuff available. They need to, they need to scratch. Um, that's, yeah, it's that's part of part of their nature. Yeah, it's Absolutely. part of their nature. That's their way of keeping their nails, yeah. you know, trimmed yeah. up and stuff. Yeah. So, um, if you have those things available to them, they probably will leave your furniture alone. Yep. So we, we talked a little bit about cats being a little bit more independent than dogs, um, but I think it's important to talk about the fact that I've seen many cats, uh, certainly here at the shelter, um, that are just as loving and cuddly as some dogs. So I guess so it depends again on the cat's personality, just like it does. It does, on and, dogs. and the, another reason why I recommend adult cats is because kittens are kittens, and you don't really know their true personality till they get older. It's like children, you know. Once they're adults, you you get the, their full personality comes out. When you adopt an adult cat you see what they're going to be like, they're, whether they're laid back or they're high energy, and you can better choose the cat to fit your lifestyle. Um, you know, kittens, I mean, I've seen crazy kittens, and then as an adult they were, you know, lumps on the couch, mm -hmm. <laughs> and vice versa. So you really, you know, that's why I recommend the adult cats mm -hmm. um, for people. I mean, like I said, kittens are adorable, right. um, and if you're prepared for that, that's fine, just like puppies, but adult cats are great. Yep. Um, we, of course, do advocate for adopting a kitten or a cat from a shelter. Um, one of the big things is, you know, you're going to be saving a life. Every every cat that you adopt makes room for another cat in need. And um, you know, with 2.7 million animals being euthanized in America, we need to get these cats adopted so we can help more. We need to make sure they get spayed and neutered so that. Um, you know, they, they're not overpopulating. I, I hear people say, well, you know, it's okay, I always find homes for my kittens. Well, that's not necessarily true because what happens is, yes, you found homes for those kittens, and they may be great homes, but those same homes could have saved a life in a shelter. Um, and and there, was an, there was a cat that was euthanized in the shelter because they didn't have a home. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep that in mind, too. Um, you know, we need to, we have a responsibility you know, we domesticated these animals and we should not be euthanizing them simply because we don't have enough homes for them. Um, we should be able to control the population so that, you know, there is a home for every animal. Absolutely. Um, it's very, very sad to me to hear of shelters euthanizing kittens because they just have so many and they can't keep up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me is devastating. Um, you know, I don't really want to get into that because you're no. very upset about that, but, you know, it's very sad to me that, that that happens. And so, you know, when you're going to choose to bring a cat in, it, it's great if you can save a life as well. Plus, the, the other thing is when you adopt a cat from a shelter, they're already going to be spayed or neutered, they're going to be vaccinated, they're going to be leukemia and AIDS tested. Um, you know, all of those things. And shelters all vary, so you got to check between shelters, but um, you know, chances are all that stuff is going to be done. And uh, what I would say is a free kitten is not a free kitten. Um, they require three vaccines um, to protect them against diseases such as distemper. You have to have them with a rabies vaccine, um, getting them spayed or neutered. Um, you also want to feline and, and AIDS test them. Those are two mm -hmm. of the biggest diseases mm -hmm. that um, we worry about in cats. Mm -hmm. um, unlike the human feline, uh, hum human leukemia and AIDS, you're not going to contract it from them, but it will spread between cats. And that's why you want to make sure when you're bringing a cat into your home with your existing cat that they are tested. Because uh, there's nothing more devastating than to bring a cat in, find out it's, it's leukemia or, or AIDS positive, and then your cat's already been exposed and chances are it's going to contract it too. Mm -hmm. Now, cats can live with these diseases. Um, usually they die from a secondary disease because their immunities are compromised. 
Um, so that's what usually happens, and it does cut their life expectancy mm -hmm. down. Um, like we said, cats can live to be 20 years. I think yeah. the oldest living cat yeah. was 38. Yep, we've so, had a couple of 20-year-old cats at the yeah, shelter yeah. who just yeah. behave like, like they were kittens yeah, again. Yeah, you know? yeah, 20 yeah. years old is not unusual anymore. Yeah. You know, with the good care, mm -hmm. if you know, they get good veterinary care and they, the good diets and stuff, they can easily live to be 20 years old. Um, so tell us, uh, there, just like dogs, there's different breeds of cats. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an expert at cat breeds, but I know that there's short-haired cats, long-haired cats. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, minxes, there's uh, Maine coon hounds, and they all have different personalities, just like different breed dogs do. Yeah, Maine, coon, Maine coons are a big fluffy cat. They're very popular. Um, you know, there are a lot of different breeds, and, and I think there's actually only 40 recognized breeds okay. in America, but um, there are a lot of mixes, you know, there, I mean, and there's also different colors, right. tuxedos, calicos, yep. uh, tigers, there's all of that. Um, I don't want to get too heavily into the breeds because honestly they're not looked, people don't pay attention to breeds in mm -hmm. cats like they do the dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, you know, they, a couple of the breeds do have specific traits. Siamese tend to be very vocal, um, so if you don't want a loud cat, Siamese probably are not for you. <laughs> they can um, be loud. Maine Coons have a lot of hair, yep. um, so if, you're, if you have that kind of concern, you don't want to get a Maine Coon. I think Maine Coons are very beautiful cats, yep. but they can be very large cats, so um, you know, if you're going to adopt a, a Maine Coon, you know, need to be prepared that that's going to be a big cat. And, and like, yeah. like a long-haired dog, they need constant yeah. grooming as yeah. well. Yeah, they, they're going to be grooming themselves. Um, some things you may be, want to be aware of is hairballs. I mean, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's another issue with cats. I mean, they do tend to spit those up. Um, so you need to be aware of, of that as well. Um, Short-haired cats, I mean, they're a little easier to, to keep their coats in check, but I mean, that's pretty much a personal preference. Like I said, um, you know, there's, there's, there's only 40 recognized breeds, but there's a lot of variance in, you know, the calicos. I mean, they, they can be very individualized in their colors and, and their, the patterns on them. And it, it, people are attracted to the look of a cat, so. Just like with dogs, right? Just like with dogs, yeah. So do, do we have the same issues with black cats as we do with black dogs? We do have an issue with, there's an old myth that, that black cats are um, bad, luck. bad lucky, <laughs> uh, bad lucky, <laughs> bad, um, but actually in Britain and Australia, they're considered lucky. So, I mean, it's, it's it, it is, thing. yeah, it's yeah. just, a, it's a myth. I mean, uh, black cats, uh, they are what they are. I mean, they're, they're just a color like any other right. color in, in the animals. In fact, a lot of people go for black cats. Um, the downside for us in the shelter is that black dogs and black cats do not photograph as well. Exactly. Um, that's the tougher thing for us, yep. is getting a good picture. A picture gets a cat or a dog adopted, and black is a little harder. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's basically the mm -hmm. only difference mm -hmm. with black cats. Mm -hmm. um, um, that's it. Any major um, issues in terms of medical? Um, I know that, the, for example, some of the short muzzled dogs, the uh, pugs and the, the bulldogs have nasal passage issues. Does, does that kind of thing exist in cats as well? Well, there is upper respiratory. Um, cats under stress can break with upper respiratory. Um, it's not unusual if you bring your cat out to, say, even the vets. Just the stress of going out of the house. Um, it doesn't take much for upper respiratory mm -hmm. to, to break mm -hmm. out. Um, usually it clears up on its own, but um, a vet can recommend antibiotics um, for other things, or they can get a secondary infection from it. So it's very important, you know, if your cat does get upper respiratory, that you do talk to a vet. Um, other than that, the, their medical issues are pretty much not much different than dogs. We okay. talked about urinary yep. tract infections, things like that. Um, you know, signs that your cat may be ill, I mean, obviously, if it's lethargic and things like that. Um, if it stops grooming itself, um, not eating, things like that, you, you really want to go to the vets because it could be something simple or it could be something serious. Unfortunately, cats have a bad habit of ingesting things, um, strings, things like that, and you know, they can easily get a blockage. Uh, that's, that's a very serious and, and can be deadly issue. So that's another reason why you got to keep stuff picked up. 
um, in your house because they can ingest things. Cat proofing your house. Cat proofing your house, <laughs> just like dog proofing. I mean, exactly. It, yeah. Or child proofing, for that matter. Yeah. So I, I, I'm I'm sure that. Um, the same advice that we give to dog owners would apply to cats in terms of um, they need to have at least yearly veterinary checkups mm -hmm. um, just to be sure that all of the things that we just talked about, whether it's you or I, whether it's uh, ingesting some foreign object, um, is not the case. Is that That's true. That correct? Yeah. I mean, veterinary care is always important. Yeah. Um, you know, cats are different. I mean, we need to keep in mind they have not been domesticated as long as dogs. In fact, um, the the original thought was that they went back to Egyptian times, but recently there was a um, grave found with a cat that was uh, 9,500 years old. Um, so, and that was in Cyprus, I think. Yep. So, you know, they don't go back as far as dogs. Um, so we don't know as much about cats as we do dogs, to be honest. Um, you know, they, they are different, but, yep. Yep. you know, we're yep. still learning things yep. about, about yep. the cats. Can, <laughs> here's a good question. Can cats be trained like you can train a dog? Sure. I mean, yeah. it, cats, cats can be trained just as easily as dogs can. Um, I mean, you know, things like litter boxes come naturally. Um, to them, but yeah, you can absolutely train. I mean, anybody who says you can't train a cat, open a can of tuna and don't see that cat run, come running. Mm -hmm. They know they relate the sound mm -hmm. to food, yep. um, and you can you can train them. You know where to eat and stuff. My friend who had several cats, um, you'd go in her house and she would feed them all. She had five, I think, and she would feed them all in separate areas. And when she opened that can, all of those cats mm -hmm. went to their 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 designated spot for eating. So that to me is training. Yep. So the, they're as food motivated as a dog. There is, yeah. I don't know if they're as as motivated as dogs, but yes, food mm -hmm. is food okay. is a good motivation. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, they love their catnip. I don't know of too mm -hmm. many cats that don't love catnip. Mm -hmm. um, I don't recommend too much of it because I've seen cats like totally off the wall with it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they. I I would say that yeah. that's definitely true. Good. Well, I hope that, um, that we've given you some, some good information. Um, my takeaway on this as a, as a dog trainer is cats are just absolutely great. I just, uh, I love them. I, I, their playfulness is, uh, is, is just a fantastic thing. Um, I think the myths that we talked about, um, some of them uh, probably not as true as uh, we would think they were. And I've seen many cats that love to curl up with their owners at night on the couch, on the bed. So, um, you know, the fact that they are independent um, is good for working folks. Yep. Um, I've seen need... some that act like dogs, too, yep, and follow, absolutely. follow yep. um, you know, I've seen very tolerant cats yep. that will allow a child to pick them up and carry them around yep, and absolutely. dress them up and yep. everything else. But there, there is no question that they are, they are different than, um, than dogs. So. Um, we thought that it was important that we give you some of this basic information, and uh, I appreciate uh, you doing that for us, Cheryl. Thanks. You're welcome, and hopefully um, when you choose to adopt a cat, you go to a shelter and, and save a life.